On the coast of Cape Hatteras, the light onshore winds had produced ideal conditions for a dive. But in these exposed waters, even the most calm conditions produce rough surf. In the trough between the sandbar and the shore, northern kingfish and gulf kingfish, known locally as sea mullet, would scavenge for a piece of invertebrate and detritus. The Florida Pompano had run almost right up into the waves, searching for food. The trough would also attract larger predators, such as this flounder or fluke, under the right conditions. At high tide, the border between the sandbar and the trough would attract hordes of sea robins. Note here the use of the modified pectoral fins to feel the bottom for food. I was surprised to find an estuarine species, the pipefish, drifting amongst the debris here too. Farther offshore and beyond the breaking waves were the remains of an old jetty, now twisted and reduced to pieces of metal. In a sandy bottom like this, any piece of hard structure would attract seaweed and other sessa organisms. The warm waters of the Gulf Stream just offshore bring in many species of small reef fish that find shelter in these sort of structures. This is the Atlantic spadefish, well known for inhabiting wrecks all up and down the southeast coast feeding on various invertebrates, including jellyfish. These juvenile grunter will one day grow up to live on the wrecks offshore in the Gulf Stream. Perhaps the most striking of the tropical visitors are these juvenile sergeant majors. The wreck also attracted sheep's head, well known for having human-like molars for teeth. The bluefish has altogether much sharper teeth, and these schools of voracious predators schooled around the upper portions of the wreck. There are also schools of other pelagic predators, such as these jack. Schools of spot also move inshore for the summer. Sometimes these fish form to mix schools with the jacks and bluefish. Deeper water and better structure allowed for larger specimens of flounder than those found inshore. But perhaps the highlight of the trip was this massive rough tail stingray. Identified by the rough spines in the tail, these rays can grow massive, perhaps the largest stingray in the world. There are also some smaller specimens of southern and Atlantic stingray. I was surprised to find the conditions so good for diving, and I can't wait to return again soon.